Welcome to SCS Engineers series of mini webinars focused on carbon sequestration and deep well injection. In this series, we'll provide an overview of carbon sequestration and deep well injection technologies. Today, I'm going to introduce injection well technologies and talk a little bit about how they work, where they can be used, how much these kinds of projects cost, and how long they take from start to finish. I'll close by addressing a few key considerations for a successful project. In today's series, I'm going to walk you through an overview of injection well technologies, both for purposes of disposing wastewater and sequestering carbon dioxide to reduce the presence of greenhouse gases. Some of the things I expect you'll take away from this are injection wells can be an environmentally responsible management option, and they provide certainty through disposal permanence. As a result of permanence, injection wells can serve to protect and even improve our surface waters and the atmosphere. And with the constantly changing requirements for public water treatment plants, deep well injection provides certainty for businesses looking for long-term water management solutions. Depending on the volumes of waste generation, there may be significant cost savings for managing your liquids and carbon on-site rather than paying to transport and disposing of it elsewhere. But first, a little bit about injection well classifications. EPA defines well classes by their intended use. There are six classes for injection wells, each with their own set of regulatory criteria. In this overview, I'm gonna talk a little bit about class one disposal wells, or those used for deep well injection, and class six injection wells, through those dedicated to carbon sequestration. Although these two classes share similar strict regulatory requirements and operation technologies, they're still pretty different. But deep well injection has been employed to manage residual wastewater since the 1950, and there are literally hundreds of permits nationwide. But SART carbon sequestration has only taken off in the last few years. And they're incentivized now by the desire for environmental stewardship and federal tax credits. So even though there are very few existing permits right now, the number of applications is growing by the month. The types of industries that use these classes of wells can sometimes overlap. For instance, a power plant may need to dispose of wastewater in a class one injection well and sequester their captured emissions in a class six injection well. The administrative process to obtain a permit is similar in both well classes, but the timeline may be exaggerated in a carbon sequestration well since there are more stringent numerical modeling requirements, significant demonstration criteria for movement of the injected plume, and strict steps to ensure environmental justice is addressed. Likewise, the greater effort from a carbon sequestration injection well shares a much larger price tag. Injection wells are designed to protect underground sources of drinking water. That's any aquifer where the total dissolved solids measures 10,000 milligram per liter or less. And to protect the groundwater, we have to make sure that any fluid that's injected stays there and doesn't come back up. So let's talk first about how injection wells work. We need to identify whether suitable geologic conditions exist at a facility to provide an injection interval and a confining unit. Is there a rock formation that's thick, laterally extensive, and has sufficient capacity to accept the injected fluid? That's our injection interval. Now, is there also a rock formation that's also thick and laterally extensive, but prevents the injected fluids from migrating upward toward the protected drinking water aquifers? That's considered our confining unit. Injection wells are installed with multiple strings of steel pipes or casing. Think about a set of nested toys, one within another. Each string of steel casing is progressively smaller and it's cemented into place. This method of construction creates redundant barriers between the injected fluid and the protected drinking water aquifers. Requirements for continuous monitoring and frequent well testing ensure the well maintains its integrity. When injection wells are sited in areas with suitable geology, when they're properly designed and installed, and when the monitoring and reporting testing plans are properly implemented, then injection wells can be a safe and effective means to dispose of things we don't want in our environment, and it can help to protect our drinking water aquifers. So that's how we inject wastewater, but how do we inject carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is naturally a gas, but if we mix it with water, we get something called fizzy water, like the carbonated beverages you drink. But fizzy water takes up a lot of pore space in our underground real estate. If we want to maximize that below ground real estate, we can compress the carbon dioxide into something called a supercritical fluid. Look at the graph to the left. 
by forcing carbon dioxide above its critical point in temperature and pressure, we can make a substance that's neither a distinct liquid nor a distinct gas. But on the illustration on the right, you see that by compressing the gas into a supercritical fluid, we effectively reduce the volume of that substance by more than 99%. And when we inject that supercritical fluid into a formation at critical depth, which is about 800 meters or more, we can maintain the supercritical nature of the fluid. Injecting this carbon dioxide as a supercritical fluid means we get a lot of product into a really small space. Injection wells can be used across the nation, but there are several criteria that determine the suitability of an area for injection. We developed this quick view illustration, compiling information from public sources so that we can focus on where suitable geology and supportive regulatory programs overlap. The green areas represent studied areas that are considered suitable geology for injection. The reddish brown color represents studied areas that may not be considered suitable geology. The states with a hatch mark are those where injection or sequestration is prohibited at this time. And the numbers on some of the states represent the number of permitted class one deep well injection systems in that state. So if you look at the states where both suitable geology and supportive regulatory programs exist, and you see that there are existing injection wells there, there's a pretty good chance that siting a well there may be feasible. With these overlapping data layers, we can determine at a glance whether injection may be a viable option. In the next two slides, I'm gonna show a summary of two real world projects to demonstrate cost and schedule for each type of project. The Deepwell project in this slide is located in Illinois and was completed in 2019. The facility needed a reliable and dedicated injection well to maintain its zero discharge status. Their total investment for the injection well system was just under $7 million and took about two years from studying the site to commencement of operation. They presently inject 10 million gallons annually and the system is designed to operate for about 30 years. The payback on their investment was just under nine months and their disposal costs are less than a nickel a gallon. That rivals the cost to transport and dispose that same wastewater at a treatment plant anywhere. This carbon sequestration project located along the, the Gulf Coast is ongoing. Our client is constructing a refinery and needed a sink for their anticipated carbon dioxide generation. The total investment for the injection well system here is estimated at $30 million and will take about three years from start to finish. The injection interval will accept more than 10 million tons of supercritical carbon dioxide over a 10 year period, putting their carbon dioxide storage cost around $3 a ton. And that's before the federal incentives offered through the Inflation Reduction Act. Before I close, I wanted to touch on some considerations when employing either deep well injection or carbon sequestration. First is chemical compatibility. If you want to protect and maximize your injectional system, we must characterize our influent in the early stages and address any chemical compatibilities. The photos on the right here were taken at the noted depths in the same well. In the one on the top, you can see the open voids along the sides of the well bore through clear fluid. That's where the fluid enters the formation for disposal. And the photo on the bottom is just three feet shallower in the same well. When we take a side view at the well bore, like we do here in this picture, those same open voids are filled with biological growth, which slows the rate that the food fluid enters that formation. This occurred as a result of incompatibility at the interface of the injected fluids and the native groundwater in that formation. The second consideration is community engagement. People want to know what's going on in their community. And if we don't proactively educate them with the correct information, they'll seek it out from their own sources, whether right, wrong, or otherwise. Perception is reality, so early engagement could eliminate a major schedule interruption. And the final consideration I want to touch on is economics. Truly understanding the economics of your options impacts your business's bottom line. Recent compilations of actual financial data put deep well injection in the top four affordable technologies for landfill leachate management. You see the graph on the below, below to the left. When you consider the potential of being prohibited from disposing your wastewater at a water treatment plant or not having sufficient real estate for constructed wetlands or lagoons, that places deep well injection as one of the most affordable water management options. 
And for sequestration of carbon dioxide, the recent revisions to the Inflation Reduction Act have asserted some serious monetary benefits into business by increasing base tax credits five times, from $17 a ton to $85 a ton. I'll close by reiterating that injection well technologies have been through decades of improvement and strict regulation. With redundant protective design components, continuous monitoring and testing, this technology has demonstrated that it's a responsible environmental management option. Injection wells are an EPA supported option for permit disposal with no residuals to have to manage. Isolating wastewater and carbon dioxide from the water we drink and the air we breathe serves to protect and improve our environment. And for businesses, use of injection well technologies provides certainty through elimination of varying water treatment requirements and provides significant cost savings over hauling waste offsite. The SES team has presented numerous topics in our mini webinar series, and I invite you to check these out by accessing the QR code at the right. We're continually updating our talks, so please check back for more. In the meantime, you can contact me at my email address here to talk about how injection technologies can benefit your business. On behalf of the entire SES carbon sequestration and deep well injection team, we thank you for tuning in today.